Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to a special edition of A Current Affair, coming to you from Kangaroo Point in Brisbane. As we go to air tonight, Pauline Hanson's One Nation Party is in damage control. It follows our explosive report on the strip club scandal involving Steve Dixon, who today fell on his sword and resigned in disgrace. Late today, I spoke with a cranky and at times emotional Pauline Hanson at her home outside Brisbane. Pauline, thanks for talking to me. Um, I came here thinking that I was going to listen to you and ask you a few questions, but yeah, I think you're cranky, so I'm going to let you start. What do you have to say? I am so upset, Tracy. I've worked for this for 23 years since I was first elected to Parliament in 1996. I've had my ups and downs with this. I just feel I keep getting, getting kicked in the guts time and time again. And it all happens right before an election. Why were these tapes held for seven months before they're released now? And I want to know, did Channel 9 pay for it? Because Al Jazeera is saying they never gave you permission to actually film that. Because they were leaked to us, we certainly didn't pay for them. We covered that last night. You watched our show last night, and so you know that we didn't pay for them. That's what you said? It was a leak. But you didn't get permission from Al Jazeera to actually... The, well, that's what happens with leaks, Pauline. That's what happens with leaks. I can't tell you why um, this videotape, this, why this vision has only just um, surfaced now, but is that really the relevant f the point here? The point here is what was on that vision and the fact that Steve Dixon didn't tell you, he didn't give you a heads up, that it might even be out there. What's on the vision? I'm not going to justify that because I'm disgusted by it. But Tracy, this one has gone on. This is a sting three years in the making to actually discredit One Nation and to pull us down. That, this was done last um, September. Now it comes out now, just on the cusp of an election. Again, why is everyone so frightened of myself? Why is everyone so frightened of One Nation? And it's quite evident in this election because the Libs now are preferencing One Nation below the Labor Party. Why? When I worked so well with them on the floor of Parliament. It happens in every, every election. Even John Howard said years ago, well, it's the Liberal Party's job to actually discredit or have a go at other political parties. And that's what I feel this is all about. I don't know who's behind it. Someone's behind all this. It really is. You can't tell me why a foreign organisation, foreign country, is interested in Australian politics. That's a big question here. You, you called for the tapes to be released. I mean, what was released to us was all of the tapes available, all of the vision available from that one night. From that one night, Tracy. Mm -hmm. This went over a period of time. Why I'm calling for the tapes re to be released is to put it in context of what actually happened. And I'm sick of them going on about that we actually asked the NRA for um, donations. Never even spoke to the NRA about donations. If they threw $10 million at us, mm. we when a heap of seats, divided seats in the Senate. Have you watched the second documentary yet? You indicated at first that you hadn't watched it. Have you watched the full documentary? Yes, I have. So you've seen everything that was said in the second documentary? Everything? You, have you seen everything Steve Dixon said? Because, you, Pauline, you keep saying that you never asked the NRA for money. It's impossible to track where the money's coming from because it's quite spaghetti. At the end of the day, I am leader of this political party. I don't care what Steve Dixon goes over there and says, right? I am the leader of this party. Do you think that I would actually take a foreign donation from the NRA? No, I wouldn't. I've had a cigarette company offer me $50,000 and I said, I'm not interested. We've never taken foreign donations. James Ashby says at one point in that documentary that what he wants from the NRA is for them to uh, uh, harness their supporters in Australia to get behind One Nation. He wants their software and some donations would be super. What's wrong with that? You said you didn't want money from the NRA. I don't want, no. What he said, and if I'm correct in what you just said, that he wants the supporters in Australia to get behind One Nation. The supporters here in Australia, that means Australians. That's not the NRA over there. So there's a hell of a difference with that. It's about getting in bed with a gun lobby that's a I'm single... I'm not getting in bed with a gun lobby. 
How, how much do I have to tell you this? It's not getting in bed with the gun lobby. I had no intentions of ever getting in bed with the gun lobby. There's gun organisations out here that I've been patron of their clubs. I work the Australian, with the Australian gun organisation over here. I've got a very strong gun policy, which I'm not going to relent on, and I have no intentions of ever changing. I don't care what these two guys said. I'm the leader of this party, not them, and I'll make the final decisions as I always have done. They represented you over there though, didn't they, of course? They went over as themselves. I didn't tell them to go asking for donations. I didn't tell them to have discussions about watering down gun laws. I actually had an interview myself personally with this um, Muller, and he actually hasn't played any of that. He tried to get me to say that I wanted um, women to carry guns around permanently for protection. I said, no way in the wide world. It's not happening here. It's got to be silent. You've got to be able to sell the message without Without minority groups, yeah, uh, and, and that's where we develop the way of strategy to be able to communicate that message clearly. Well, you, you, there is an interview that he gave that you gave him for his uh, website. I think Gun Reform Australia, I think, was what his website was called, where you said that everyone should have gun training because you don't trust the government. It's not that I don't trust the government at all. That's what you said. That's what you said in the Tracy, interview. Tracy, let's put it in, in context with it. I have ne I've called for a national civil service right from 1996 in my maiden speech where I believe that everyone should have some training how to handle a gun if wars ever touch our shores again. And that national civil service for discipline and knowing how to what to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I support all these young cadets going into the training whether of any armed services and I think it'd be wonderful for our young kids it'll never happen because they don't they don't believe in doing it and you've got a lot of other countries that actually have training the young ones Israel and some other countries Switzerland have the training and there's nothing wrong with it there's another sequence in the documentary where Steve Dixon is talking to the chap in the with the hat at the NRA looks like a cocktail party and Steve Dixon says to him we, we need 10 million dollars you know, we can do all sorts of things. We need 10, what does he say exactly? We can change the voting system in Australia. We just don't have the money. And then at another point, he says, we need $10 million. And this guy says, well, I'm not going to give you $10 million, but I'd give you 100 bucks. Yeah. And he's an NRA and this guy. Is the guy. And this is the probably guy who's big, this is, sounds like a guy who's big noting himself in a situation in a room full of big names and all the rest of it. But at the end of the day, Tracy, the decisions come to me. They can go and big note and wish all they want to wish, but it's not the case. I guess what I'm saying is that, that that's why these questions keep being asked of you. That's why there's still a cloud hanging over you as a result of that Al Jazeera documentary. That these are things that were said in that documentary. It wasn't money just talked between three guys in a cab on one occasion. And, you know, this was done with your approval. This whole I'm trip sorry, was done with your approval. It was approval. not done with my approval, Tracy. The, it was the not trip, done. The I knew they were going over there. But do I put words in their mouth? Do I tell them they have to say these things or ask these things? I've been absolutely devastated with the whole lot. What actually has been said and what's occurred there. I'm furious about this. Do you think that I've worked my guts out all these years to try and get change in this country? Yes, people want change the, to our electoral system because I think it's corrupt. I really do think it's corrupt with our voting system, forcing people to put their preferences where they don't want it to go. There's no identification shown. There's people who vote multiple times in this country and the political parties aren't prepared to change it. Do you think I'm going to stop fighting for the Australian people that are, I see... <sighs> I see farmers that have been forced off the land. Kids no hope of future. And people are, are hoping and praying that I'm going to be the voice for them. And I cop all this shit all the time and I'm sick of it. Absolutely sick of it. Kevin Rudd goes to a, he goes to a strip joint. You've got Craig Thompson using the credit card of the, of the um, unions in a brothel. You've had corruption, you've had Eddie Abed, you've had pedophiles, you've had everything. But they just sail through it. No, let's, let's give Paul in the hands and kick in the guts. Have you said this to Steve Dixon? Have you said this to him? Did you say this to him last night? You'd have been entitled to? No, I didn't. 
Why not? He's bashing himself around enough. You have no idea, and I'm concerned for that man too. I've copped it more than once, and I keep getting up and I'll have another go until the people don't want to vote for me. Is this difficult to speak with you like this because James Ashby is here in the house with you and he's very close to you. Do you feel you were let down by them both over there? Now is the time to say it. You've stood by them. Now is the time to say it if you want to clean the slate. I've been let down dreadfully. Not by him. I can give you a whole list of them. A whole list of actually keeps having to go on. So just don't put the blame on them. I've had Fraser Anning and I've had Brian Burston. I've had a whole list of them, David Olford, you name them. Where are they now? Where are they? I've stuck this with this because I believe in making a change for the people. Why are you still in it? Why are you still in it? Look at you. Why don't you walk? I mean, look, at what, look at what it's doing to you. Tracy, I've made a change out there for people. I save people from losing their lands through bomb, just taking their land for the Singaporean army. I've helped the farming sector. I've helped those kids out there get apprenticeship schemes. That was introduced this year by the government, my scheme. I'm hoping to get a water in land to help the farming sector in the Murray, darling. And I'll do it. Was it a mistake to look for the gun vote? Was it a mistake? With 2020 hindsight, was it a mistake to get involved with those people? didn't go over there to get involved with the NRA. That's another organisation in a foreign country. If I work with anyone, I work with the gun groups out here in Australia. I don't need to get involved with the NRA. I had no intentions of getting involved with the NRA. It was going over for, there for a sportsman's dinner. I was invited to go. I wasn't going. And I never went. They are not leaders of this party. How can you proceed when it's so hard to get the right people around you? The people that you can trust? How do you proceed? Tracy, since 2016, just after I took back the leadership of this party, we'd got four members elected to Parliament in 2016. We've had three elected to the Western Australian Upper House. We've had two in New South Wales with Mark Latham, and then I've got one in Queensland. We are growing. It hasn't been easy. But all those members that have been elected are doing a fantastic job. They've really represented their states. And this pre-selection process that we've been through, we had a lot more candidates that applied, and a lot of them didn't get through because they're not credible people. Oh, there's one or two that gets through, um, and the, we're not the only political party that have problems with candidates. All the major parties do. But it's finding the people with the intestinal fortitude and their honesty to actually have the fight in them to carry through and stand beside me for what I want to do. But there are those people there. It's been tough. And I'm sick and tired of seeing people jump on my coattails because they can see a future in politics, but they haven't got the work ethic. But the ones that I have there now, they've done a fantastic job. And I think I've got a great lineup of candidates, especially the Senate candidates. And there's some great lower house candidates that are standing in this election. There are people who are saying that Clive Palmer might, you know, hurt your vote at this election. He's spent a lot of money on election advertising, money that you don't have. Um, if he does, if you don't do so well at this election, what are you going to do? I've got three years left, Tracy. I've got another three years. Mark Latham's just got elected to the New South Wales Parliament for another eight years there. So don't write me off. You know, underestimate me. 
and uh, that's what they have done. Because Tony Abbott said many years ago, just after I got out of prison in 2003, she'll never make a comeback into politics. Who do you blame for the situation you're in now? It's a series of events that actually happened. If I could turn back the time, I would say, don't go to America. But you can't. I have to deal with this whole situation. And like I said, every time, the major political parties out there are terrified of One Nation. Clive Palmer's, the Greens, they're not worried about them. They're not worried about the Darren Hinches or Jackie Lambies or, you know, Corey Bernardi. They're not worried about them. It's always been One Nation.